up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 hyundai tucson courtesy of jack gm volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because there actually are several changes for the 2024 model year including a bunch of new safety actually as well you do get america's best warranty being five years 60 000 mile bumper to bumper 10 years 100,000 miles on the powertrain gotta love that and you also get three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance that's going to save you some money as well so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering fuel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2024 tucson first one being the se and actually the one we are in today starting at twenty seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars then you got the sel for twenty nine thousand four hundred and lastly the limited starting at thirty six thousand five hundred and ten dollars and yes that does mean two trim levels have been eliminated for the 2024 model year but that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration though if you wanted to add all wheel drive you can do that simply add fifteen hundred dollars then to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant is going to be the same powering the tucson is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder putting out 187 horsepower at 6100 rpm 178 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters for the limited trim level only did want to mention that zero to 60 time approximately 7.1 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 32 on the highway for the front wheel drive 23 city 29 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel but so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our tucson wanted to mention to you guys there are some drive modes there's actually a nice toggle switch located directly behind the shifter if you were to press that up and down you will get normal sport smart and snow adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity actually as well so now i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put this acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 tucson here up to speed all right bit of an uphill acceleration here but three two one go it's okay I guess it was uphill a little bit, but yeah, it's okay. It's certainly not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway. Not the very quickest SUV, but that's not to be expected in the Hyundai Tucson, to be quite honest. So anyways, I don't have any issues with the acceleration. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.8-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.8-inch solid rear discs. As far as that 6 easier stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at a respectable 124 feet. As far as the braking feel good since there's nobody behind us it's fine honestly it's perfectly fine i don't have any issues with the braking feel whatsoever not super firm but not a soft braking feel either so it's just right for what the tucson is and that 124 number with suvs it can range from like 115 to 139 so 124 right in the middle of the pack so absolutely no issues with that then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension gas pressurized shock absorbers as well as far as ride quality goes it's been been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today but we'll say it looks like these roads are freshly paved so yeah it's pretty smooth <laughs> for one reason or the other so i don't have any issues there as far as steering feel goes like i said it does adjust depending upon the drive mode that you put it in so in this sport driving mode that i still have it in right now it is a noticeably weightier steering feel so it more instantly points you in the direction that you want to go let's do a little experiment here if i want to take it out and put it in smart definitely loosens up the steering feel so it's really got something for everybody there if you like a loose steering feel you got it if you like a heavier more of like a, a sports sedan steering feel you got that too with the sport driving mode honestly so either way you're perfectly fine there then touching on cabin noise this is a good experiment are going approximately 45 miles per hour i'll let you guys be the judge of that uh, i got the road mic on here so i don't have any issues personally with uh, any kind of road noise or wind noise coming into the cabin it's been perfectly fine then touching on visibility it's excellent i can see 
perfectly fine out the back and the rear view mirror. So 100% not gonna have any issues there. And then just touching off forward visibility a little bit, for the limited trim level, you will get rain sensing windshield wipers, but only for that limited trim level. So essentially what that is, is whenever the Tucson detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. It's just like automatic headlights, just one less thing you gotta worry about there. So that's pretty cool. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Hyundai Tucson. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Hyundai Tucson. There is a new color available for this year. That color is Hampton Gray. That is available across all trim levels in case you're curious. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Take a look at the VIN. First character is the number five, indicating that the new Tucson is built and assembled here in the U.S., specifically Alabama, in case you're curious. But let's go ahead and start up front. You will find a large, dark front grille coming standard. Daytime running lights integrated within that front grille. I absolutely love that look. It's so cool that Hyundai is starting to, or it really has done it for a few years now, integrating the LED light system into the front grills of their vehicle. So definitely a very cool styling cue there. LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. Going to get the automatic feature with that as well, along with automatic high beams. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim that back to low beams for you there. So that is pretty cool. And you guys can see just to the corners of those front headlights, you will also get front air curtains as well. So that's going to direct air around the wheel tire combination for a little better aerodynamics up front there. But that pretty much rounds out the front end. Still very good looking. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right. So, but now since we are around to the side of this one, you got to love that upper silver window trim. That definitely gives it a very distinct design cue there. Kind of creating a floating roof line towards the C pillar in the back. You got the Z shaped creases, just like the Hyundai Elantra. Always thought that was a cool design cue as well. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals then as well. Then take a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch alloys for the SE and SEL trim levels, and then 19 inch alloys coming standard on the limited. So we do have the 17s, they look pretty good in my opinion. I don't have an issue with them, but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. And if you're curious where the rear window wiper is, cause you guys can see it's not affixed to the rear glass. It is actually tucked away up underneath if you guys can see that. And uh, that's pretty cool. It's kind of like the Chevy Tahoe, Chevy Suburban. So it doesn't impede rear visibility at all because of that. But also pretty cool. You got the Hyundai logo kind of integrated into the rear glass as well. So I like that, that's different. You don't usually see that set up too often. Look at these taillights though. They are, they almost look like shark teeth almost, but they are LED if you go with the SEL or limited trim levels, but they are not LED for the SE that we have today. They are halogen. So I do want to mention that. Got the H-Track badging found on that rear tailgate. That is going to be Hyundai's all-wheel drive system because of course every manufacturer names their all-wheel drive systems. Another really cool thing I like is the kind of hexagonal pattern integrated into the rear bumper. It's another different styling cue that you don't usually see too often. So do you like that? You kind of got a little bit of a rear diffuser. I see those cutouts right there. And then just below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet under there somewhere tucked away. So Having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. It's always here is that exhaust clip. And so but now since we are around to the back of the Tucson, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a manual tailgate for our SE trim level that we have with us here today. But if you were to go with that SEL or Limited, you will find a hands-free power tailgate. So kick your foot underneath, it's gonna automatically open up if your hands are full. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 38.7 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, you can of course fold those rear seats down, bumping that up to 74.8 cubic feet then. In the cargo area, you can find grocery bag hooks. There's a 12 volt power outlet tie down anchors there's a cargo cover available as well and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find a spare tire you might be able to slide an ice scraper in there but basically it's just the spare tire under the cargo floor there but 
Then make our way up to the rear legroom. That comes in at 41.3 inches. That is a, uh, that's luxury good, quite honestly. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had sitting behind my own driving position. There is a place to hide the seat belt as well. I wanted to mention that to you guys. I always found that pretty cool. Rear seats are reclining, so you got a little bit more comfort there. Rear center armrest with cup holders. That does come standard for all trim levels. No rear ventilation on our SE trim level, unfortunately. However, you will get that otherwise. Heated rear seats, you can find them actually on the limited trim level. Dual rear USB charging ports are available. We, again, don't have them on our SE, but heated rear seats are gonna come standard on the limited if you wanted to spoil the rear passengers then a little bit. But then make our way up to the front seats. Cloth seating is gonna come on the SE that we have today, but I do like the nice design on the upper portion of the seats of our SE trim. That actually looks pretty cool. So leatherette seating coming with the SEL, leather seating with the limited, eight-weight power driver seat with power lumbar for the SEL Unlimited, heated front seats for the SEL Unlimited, ventilated front seats for the limited along with memory settings for that trim as well and you will actually also get an eight-way power adjustable passenger seat for that limited too but honestly even with the se trim that we have today even though they're cloth and manually adjustable i don't have any issues with them they're actually pretty comfortable i've felt a heck of a lot worse so my short test drive seat comfort is perfectly fine for me at least but then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, of course. It is leather wrapped for the limited trim level, also heated for that limited trim level, but the 10 and two grips is really what impressed me. These 10 and two grips, uh, the design to it, it's so thick. So I absolutely love the 10 and two grips. So anyways, then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Got your Hyundai logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock and unlock. So pretty basic key, but it is gonna be keyless entry with the push button start for the SEL Unlimited. Otherwise you're gonna get that turnkey start that we have with us here today. Remote start is also available. Smart Park is gonna come on the Limited where you can pull out the car and back it back into a parking spot using the key fob. So that's pretty cool too. But in our case, all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and turn the key. And so once started up, when it comes to the gauges, analog gauges for the SE and SEL trim. So that is what you guys are looking at, of course, but you will get a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster for that limited trim level. So that's gonna be completely customizable. It's gonna change colors and all that stuff when you change the drive mode. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, touching on our gauges, you got how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your outside temperature, trip A, trip B, of course, and there's some steering wheel mounted controls that you can adjust different, different readings on the digital portion of the screen at least. So I'll just say it'll get the job done but now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality a panoramic sunroof is going to come in the limited power sunroof is going to come with the convenience package for the other trims dual zone climate control for the sel and limited auto dimming rear view mirror with home link for the limited led interior lighting for the limited limited trim really gives you all those uh creature comforts i guess you could say so uh just in front of the shifter you have a little bit of rubberized storage you have a couple usb charging ports 12 volt power outlet as well i'm actually charging up my uh my battery for my camera right now uh, you got a leather wrap shift boot i like that a couple cup holders just beside that electromechanical parking brake and within the center armor it's actually a decent amount of storage in there and uh i think the design element i like the best on the interior of the tucson is this kind of gloss black and uh, silver strip that runs along the doors just above the passenger side glove box it really continues just through the uh, gauges and uh, kind of continues into the air vents it just looks good so i like that but anyways now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen so an eight inch colored touchscreen display is going to come on the se and sel and that is what you guys are looking at of course but there is a 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display with the limited either way you get bluetooth and audio streaming also android auto apple carplay but here's the kicker you get wireless android auto apple carplay with the eight inch screen not with the 10 and a quarter inch you'd think it'd be vice versa but it's not so it's pretty cool that because it wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto for the screen that we're looking at here. Factory navigation system coming with the limited. There's a voice memo system as well, so you can record your voice and play it back at a later time if you didn't want to forget something, maybe. There's also a quiet mode where it eliminates the rear speakers and limits the front speakers. So if you have kids sleeping in the back, that's going to help you out there. Also, you can check out your radio information. So you get six speakers for the SE and SEL and then an eight speaker Bose sound system for the limited. So we do have that six speaker sound system with us here today. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Honestly, for traditional radio, that wasn't even Sirius XM, that was traditional radio, that was decent. 
uh, one of the better six speaker sound systems that I typically hear. So decent amount of bass, clarity wasn't the best cause it's, you know, traditional radio, but maybe if it was Sirius XM, it'd be a lot better. Honestly, I don't have a problem with that sound system. Of course, you know, it's not the best cause it's six speakers, but it'll get the job done. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Tucson in reverse, you will find a rear view camera. It's not that bad of quality. It's not the very highest quality, but it's not the very worst that I've tested, but that is gonna let you know who or what is behind you, which is always, is going to lead us into safety. And let me start by giving you my favorite part here. IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS that pretty much says it all right there. And that does apply for all trim levels, believe it or not. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You're also gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Forward collision warning with pedestrian detection. Automatic emergency braking, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, driver attention monitoring system, rear occupant alert, and adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which is a brilliant system on all Hyundais, probably my favorite. Uh, if you go with the limited trim level, then you're going to get a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and front and rear parking sensors as well. So it's going to beep at you if you get too close to something. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, great safety, of course, an IHS top safety pick plus. It doesn't get any better than that. Digital gauges are great in the upper trim. But having said that, I honestly don't mind these gauges either. A little bit different than what I'm used to seeing. So I don't mind them. America's best warranty, you can't beat that. You get three years of 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Can't beat that either. Really, I think that's the best maintenance program as far as free maintenance goes that uh, is out there right now. The only constructive criticism I can think of is some rear window sunshades would be nice to have as an option even for the limited trim level. And uh, I always say this, but uh, multicolor ambient lighting, I know Hyundai can do it because they do it on so many of their other vehicles. It would be nice to see it at least as an option here on the Tucson as well. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Tucson in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. If you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.